Hey guys, welcome back to Southwest Victory Gardens. My name is Brandon. On this channel, we talk all about desert gardening. Thanks for checking out this video, really appreciate it. Uh, we are back in the Victory Garden and our uh, garden is ready to plant. Um, if you check out our last video, we put in this quick Victory Garden right in our front yard using uh, no compost, no fertilizers. Uh, all we did was we uh, chopped up some weeds that we had around the yard and as, you know, as much as we could and we dug that into the soil uh, so that you know, over time those weeds are going to break down and they're hopefully going to provide a small amount of nutrients to the soil uh, so that we can get some fertilizers and we can get some compost and we can start working on building up the soil uh, so that it, we can uh, you know, start to grow more vegetables in it. So this garden is ready to plant. You know, we watered it in real good. We, like let it, we, we flooded it, let the water sink in, and then we flooded it again, let the water sink in, and we flooded it again and we let the water sink in. So we did that you know, two, three, four times. And each time that water got down deeper and deeper. Uh, then we wanted to let the soil rest for a few days, which is what we did. And so now we are ready to go ahead and plant this garden. So since it's our first garden and you know, we're not really sure you know, how, uh, how well the soil is gonna uh, grow vegetables, I think what the best thing uh, to do would be to start off with uh, not just a, a, a low nutrient requiring crop, so something like you know, lettuce or carrots, you know, things that don't need a lot of nutrients, um, I thought instead the better thing to do would be to actually plant uh, a nutrient providing crop in the way of beans. So any type of legume, whether it's beans or peas, you know, cespania, there's all sorts of different kinds of legumes. Uh, all of those plants actually can feed the soil. So rather than taking nutrients out of the soil, they put nutrients back into the soil. So I thought since this is our first garden, we want to, you know, try to get some nutrients put into that soil so that next season we have a little bit more nutrients in the soil. We can chop off the roots, leave them in the soil, and, and hopefully that'll help our next season's crop do a little bit better. Uh, another reason to grow beans is, you know, uh, bush beans was what, we're, what we're going to grow today is a, it's a nice fast crop, you know, it's determinant, so we're going to get all the beans at one time so we can can them if we want. Uh, and also, if we want, we could save the seed from them. Beans are a really easy crop to save seed from. So I think that's what I want to do. I, I want to grow out some seed. Um, and so f uh, I think, you know, we're going to get uh, the most out of this, this small garden here if we just go ahead and plant beans in it. And then next season, whether that's monsoon or in the fall, we can consider planting other crops, maybe things that require uh, a little more nutrients, a little bit more nutrient rich soil. But for now, we're going to start with beans. And specifically, uh, we're going to grow a bush bean. And I'm going to recommend a, a bush bean called burpee stringless. Burpee stringless. Um, there's a lot of bush beans out there. You know, there's blue lake and tender green and landrift stringless. You know, uh, burpee stringless uh, was a bean that was bred for drought tolerance and heat tolerance. So it specifically uh, was bred to, you know, withstand drought and heat. And so those are uh, two very uh, common, uh, you know, weather situations that you might run into in a desert garden, drought and heat. And, you know, it's actually the best bush bean that I've seen perform uh, in desert soil. So I'm going to go ahead and recommend you grow out that bush bean. Uh, some other alternatives would be maybe a type of cowpea. Uh, cow peas do really great in our soil and pretty much any variety of cow pea you want to decide to grow will do really well. Uh, I don't really like pole beans so much. Uh, they don't produce very heavily so you know uh, you can if you, if you have a lot of room in your garden you can grow pole beans but um, you know for this small little space I think bush beans would be a, a better option there um, so uh, you know but if you have another uh, a bean that you like go ahead and give it a shot but I'm gonna go ahead and recommend again burpee stringless it's a drought tolerant bean it's heat tolerant uh, it matures really quickly um, sooner than most other bush beans and so um, for all of those reasons and more it's a really a good option um, you might need some kind of uh, rule or yardstick or something like that. Uh, I like to use my hand for measuring. Um, my, uh, my fist is about four inches across. Sometimes I'll make the heavy metal sign, you know, that's about four inches. And if I want about six inches or so, I do the, you know, the hang 10 and, and, that, and that gives me uh, ab about six inches. Uh, you can use a ruler if you want, or you can just eyeball it. You know, it doesn't even uh, matter with that. Um, I'm also gonna use a knee pad because I'm getting old and my knees hurt. And I am uh, going to be using my favorite tool. This is called a cobra head. You can use a stick. You can use a hori hori. You can use you know any kind of weeding tool or hoe that you want. Uh, all we're going to be doing is making rows in the soil. So whatever tool you like, uh, I'm really comfortable with this one. I really like it a lot. It's just one that I've used for many years, and so I'm going to go ahead and use it. 
but uh, essentially all you need is something to make some rows into the soil and, and that's it. And of course, uh, at the end, we're gonna put some mulch down. So if you have any kind of mulch, whether uh, I'm using chopped up weeds, you can use alfalfa hay if you like. Um, you might even use straw or wood chips, but I'm gonna recommend alfalfa hay if you got it. Um, but let's go ahead and, and get this garden planted and, uh, and see how it looks. Start by making a trench about two inches from the side of the bed. You wanna make your trench about one to two inches deep. Uh, you don't wanna make it too deep uh, but also you don't want it to be too shallow. Uh, using the ruler or your hand for measuring, come out about six inches and then make another trench. Uh, and you're just going to do that all the way down the bed. So, you know, you're trying to make these as, as straight as possible. You don't want them to be uh, crooked. Uh, using the side of your uh, palm or, you know, like a karate chop, uh, run your hand back and forth uh, in your trench to kind of smooth it out and, and, and make it a little bit more defined. Uh, you know, remove any rocks or uh, chunky boulders or anything like that that you find and just, you know, run the side of your hand back and forth and smooth it out just a little bit. Cobra head works really good for this, so I strongly recommend y'all get one. I'm really trying hard to avoid putting any of my body weight in the bed. Uh, you don't want to uh, put any pressure down if you can. Now I'm putting the seeds down about six inches apart. I'm using my hand for spacing. And I put them in the first trench and at their spacing and then I just follow that same spacing all the way down until I get all of the beans planted. And that's it. Alright, let's look at what we got here. We got our rows. These, now, you, I don't really pay attention to depth uh, when I'm planting seeds. Um, a lot of people are really particular about how deep their seeds are. Um, I guess the rule most people follow is at like two or three times the depth of the seed. Um, I, seeds seeds come up pretty much all the time for me. I, I do try to plant you know smaller seeds a little shallower I guess um, and, and bigger seeds a little bit deeper but you know I don't pay too much attention to it but I would guess that these uh, troughs are about you know one inch deep or so um, but you can see the beans are uh, about you know beep beep that's that's my uh, my hang ten six inches apart um, and so I have six going this way six going this way um, I, I know that these are a fresh seed so I'm only planting one um, per you know everywhere I want one to grow uh, you know you could plant two or some people plant three or four um, you know I, I think that's a waste of seed especially if it's fresh seed from last year I think that's kind of overkill uh, and then you got to go in and thin them out anyway so uh, I, I rather would just plant fresh seed and plant one and uh, it's going to save me seed, it's going to save me time, it's going to save uh, me a lot of hassle. So, um, Alright, so now what we're going to go through next is uh, karate chop these seeds down, uh, lightly cover them and then we might cover them with a little bit of mulch. So I just wanted to show you up close. Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and karate chop these beans down. This will help them stay in the trenches as we uh, smooth the dirt on top of them. I'll start by smoothing the dirt from the high spots into the low spots and then try to get this bed as flat as possible with my hands before I use my rake to rake up any rocks or gravel and use the back of the rake to get it even flatter. I want it perfectly flat like a level. Uh, once I get it raked nice and flat, I'm going to go ahead and start watering it in. I want to water real deep because I want those beans to soak up all this water and I want the water to go deep to help the roots grow down even deeper. Uh, this might take a little while. You should use a really soft hose nozzle to do this. You don't want to blast it with a jet stream or anything like that. But go ahead and give it a, a nice watering, for the, especially for this first watering. You want to water that in real deep. All right, let's take a look. I let that water soak in. It took about 45 minutes. I watered it real deep, uh, I, you know, the water was overflowing right over here, that's when I knew when to stop. Um, and I wanted that water to soak down real deep. I also wanted those beans to, you know, kind of swell up a little bit, you know, because they're right below the soil surface, they're going to soak up some of that water. Um, I had uh, some grass clippings that I chipped up, you know, just like this with my pruners, you know, um, and I used that to just lightly uh, 
kind of dust the, the, the garden. I'm not gonna put um, a lot of mulch right now. Uh, I wanna leave it kind of sparse like this. And the reason, there's a few reasons. One, I want the seeds to come up. So I wanna make sure that the seeds, you know, the soil warms up and the seeds can, you know, poke through that. Um, if we cover it too much right now, the seeds won't be able to make it their way through. Uh, the other reason I don't wanna put mulch um, uh, right now is of cut there's a little there's a little caterpillar called a cutworm and it lives in the soil and it lives in the mulch and so when the seeds pop up it likes to nibble those you know fresh seeds as soon as they come right out of the ground that's what they like to eat so they hide in the mulch and when the seeds pop up then they can munch on them but if there's no mulch or if the mulch is really light they don't like that they don't like the sun they like to be like un under the mulch so we don't want to put too much mulch down before the seeds come up. In fact, most of the time I don't actually put any mulch down, but I did wanna show you just how, if I were to put mulch, how I would do it, um, just very lightly, just like this. And then so what'll happen is those seeds are gonna uh, come up, they're gonna germinate, and they're gonna pop up out of there, and once they're about two or three inches tall, um, I'm gonna add more, uh, more grass clippings uh, or more alfalfa hay or whatever mulch that I wanna use. Um, but for now, this is, this is plenty. Okay, so. I'm going to maybe water the surface slightly a couple times over the next week. Not 100% necessary, but it'll help those seeds germinate. Um, but I did notice that this soil was pretty moist uh, under, this, under the surface, so it's holding moisture pretty well, which is great, which means I probably don't need to water deep again for another you know, five to seven days probably. But I will lightly mist the so uh, uh, surface of the soil a couple times just to keep those beans that are up uh, at the surface, just to keep them nice and moist. So, so that's it. This is how I'm gonna plant uh, you know, any kind of production bed. You know, When I'm doing long rows, I use the same spacing. Um, obviously, if you're doing a square foot garden, um, or you're planting lots of different stuff, you know, you, you're not gonna make rows like that. But you know, this, this works really well for this little small garden. We're just gonna do some beans. And then in the summer, uh, once those be these beans are done, we can, we can look into some of those summer crops and maybe we do some summer beans like the tepary uh, or the cowpea. Uh, and then we really get the soil going so that in the fall, we, we'll have preceded it with, with two bean crops. Um, and I think we, we might have enough time to do that if we, if we choose the right crops. So, um, all right, well, great. Thank you so much for checking this out. Really uh, appreciate you um, watching these videos. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do another video on compost coming up soon here. So I want y'all to check that one out as well. And if you have any questions on how to plant beans or bean varieties or you know anything else, desert gardening related go ahead and you know leave a comment down below and i'll be happy to answer your questions so uh take care everyone and i hope you enjoyed this short video uh, we'll see you next time bye